Today we're going to show you how a beginner can get started using Arduino Uno to control an addressable LED strip. Well, welcome to this beginner video. And many of us have this pre-programmed convenient controller that our LED strips sometimes come with. But today I'm going to show you why using your own Arduino is really the way to go. It's fun and you learn something. It's educational. It's always a plus. We're also going to talk about best practices when connecting your LEDs to your Arduino so that you get the most out of your LEDs, you don't burn them out, and so that you don't destroy your Arduino in the process. That's always a good thing as well. We'll also take a look at one of the very popular LED libraries, the Fast LED. We'll manipulate the code there to get the patterns that we want. We'll show you some different patterns. While this is not exhaustive, it is a good start, so I hope you stay to the end. Let's begin. The WS2812B LED strips come as a waterproof, like you see here with the plastic uh, around the LEDs, but today we'll be using the non-waterproof, and those are the ones without the plastic. They also come with different pixel spacing. Some come with 30 pixels per meter. The ones we're using today are 60 pixels per meter, which is uh, 300 pixels per 5 meters, and that's what we have here, 5 meter uh, reel. You can cut off however many LEDs you need for your project. Today we're going to cut off 10 LEDs, and then we're going to cut off another 30 LEDs for two different strips. When you cut them in half, you want to cut along the line so that the soldering pad is on both strips so that you have something to solder to. And if I zoom in here, you can see the line. It goes right through the pads. We've already cut off a strip of 10 LEDs. Now the next thing we're going to do is cut off a strip of 30 LEDs. Then we're going to solder the wires to it. We've counted our 30 LEDs for our second strip. Now we're going to take a pair of scissors and then cut right along that line. It's on the PCB, the flexible PCB. There we go. Now we have some soldering pad left that we can solder uh, new wires on. Here I have three wires and I'm going to strip the ends of them so that I can solder them onto my LED strip to use as my leads. They are flexible 20 gauge that I uh, cut out of a computer that I used to have. You can uh, use 22 gauge, that would be fine as well. I also have 22 gauge, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this. Here's a close-up of the strip. Now you want to pay attention to the direction of the arrow. It's pointing right. You pay attention to that so you know which side is your in and which side is your out. I'm going to peel the tape back a little bit on the back side of the LED strip so that I can uh, stick it to the surface so that it doesn't move around on me while I'm soldering. Now uh, before I solder, I like to put a little bit of this liquid rosin flux, just a drop of it on the contacts because it helps the uh, solder spread out evenly and contact better. It's like liquid magic. So I'm going to put a, a little bit of this uh, so-called liquid magic on the uh, on the leads here when I tend the, the leads before I apply them to the LED strip. I'm also going to put a little bit on the LED strip too. Why not? I'm applying a little bit of solder to the ends of the leads and I'll do that for all three so that they contact, make better contact with the uh, LED strip. Now I've got all three of them done. I've decided to use the 20 gauge wires for the 5 volt and ground connections, but for the uh, data pin here, I'm going to use a 22 gauge wire so that it can fit into a breadboard or also fit into uh, Arduino. Well, you may be new to using these LED strips with your Arduino, and you may be asking yourself, self, what is the best way to power these strips? And the answer would be, it depends on what type of LED you have and how many you have in your strip. These are RGB LEDs. They're not like the dot star LEDs, which are a little more power demanding. These are RGB LEDs with a maximum uh, current pool of 50 milliamps each. So I have 10 here, and that would be a maximum current pool of 500 milliamps at its absolute brightest. That means if they're all burning bright white. So you don't want to use your microcontroller to power this uh, 10 LED strip because each pin on here has a max current of 40 milliamp. So our best option would be to use a, a breadboard power supply. Now this can supply up to 700 milliamps of power, which is perfect for our 500 milliamp max on this strip. So we could use that. We could also use a wall adapter here, which is 5 volt 2 amp, or we could really go overkill and use this external power supply, which is 24 volt 20 amp. And I like this because you can adjust the voltage. You don't have to use 5 volts, which would extend the life of your LED strip. Well, let's say you have more than 10 LEDs in your strip. You have 30, like we just cut 30 LEDs off of our reel here. 
and we soldered the wires on, they're ready to go. How are we going to supply power to that? You obviously don't want to use your microcontroller. You don't want to use your breadboard power supply because it would overload it, it would heat up, and you'd destroy it. So if this requires 500 milliamp, that's going to require 1.5 amp. And the best option for us would be either the 5 volt 2 amp wall adapter or the external power supply here with 24 volt 20 amp. And I can adjust the voltage. I don't have to go 5 volts. I can prolong the life of my LEDs by using 4.5 volts. Now when using a wall adapter, you want to use a plug adapter too so you can fit the leads into the port here. And when you do that, you want to use a capacitor. It's not required, but it is best practice to buffer the fluctuation of current that you may get from this. So what we're going to do is use a 1000 microfarad capacitor. And you can see the negative side is labeled negative. Negative pin is shorter, positive pin is longer. We are going to put that right into the ports here along with our wires and we'll clamp them down and we'll have that capacitor there to buffer any kind of fluctuation in current. Now we're also going to use the capacitor on our external power supply, especially our external power supply because they're more likely to have those fluctuations in current. So like the wall adapter, we're going to go ahead and just attach these right here where we connect the leads and clamp them down and then you've got this uh, 1000 microfarad capacitor to help uh, buffer any fluctuations in current that could potentially shorten the life of your LED strip. Now if you're using a whole reel uh, you definitely want to use the external power supply and like I said use that capacitor right there along with it. That is uh, the best way to power your uh, LED strips. Now when it comes to connecting your data pin from your LED strips to your microcontroller. This middle wire right here is the data pin. What we're going to do is use a resistor in the middle here. Now this resistor is a 5000 ohm resistor. I've used 10,000 ohm, that's fine as well. I've also used 1000 ohm, but I, I wouldn't go below 500. So we're going to attach the data pin to this side of our resistor. Then we're going to attach a data pin to the other side of our resistor here and then to whatever pin it is that we're using on our microcontroller. And uh, I like, some people don't do it, but I do like to keep a resistor in between there to extend the life of my microcontroller. I do use these nearly every day, so I do want to get the most out of them that I can. So that is also a best practice. Now I do like to uh, power my LEDs just below five volts because it looks just as good at four and a quarter or four and a half volts as it does at five volts. And that'll also extend the life of my LEDs. When an external power supply like this isn't an option, this is kind of overkill for a smaller uh, strip, you can always go to an adjustable voltage regulator. Got this on Amazon fairly cheap. And you can plug your five volts in here and you can adjust it down to four, four and a quarter over here. See how you like that. Uh, if you're putting in more than five volts here, this can take up to 24 volts. You're definitely going to want to check that with a multimeter coming out here to make sure that you're not applying more than 5 volts to your strip. Otherwise, you'll kill your LEDs and uh, totally negate everything you're trying to do. And uh, that's another option to extend the life of your LEDs. When providing power to our LED strip, we don't want to plug our board in first and then plug the wall adapter in or the external power supply because it could create uh, unexpected fluctuations in, in current and damage our board. It could. The best way to do it would be to supply power to your LED strip first. So go ahead and connect that to your external power supply, or your wall adapter, or whatever it is. And then go ahead and plug your, your leads into your board, then plug your board in. However that may be, whether it's uh, 9 volt or whether it's uh, to the computer here. Well, it's time to connect our LEDs. So I'm going to connect the strip with 10 LEDs on it first. And I'm going to go ahead and use the wires that were already attached to the LED. Remember I cut this off from a reel of uh, LED, an LED strip reel. And you want to cut right along the line right there. And so I have 10 on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this little uh, attachment right here. And we're going to go ahead and attach the positive pin, which is red. I'm going to attach it to our breadboard. I'm going to use the breadboard power supply. And we're going to attach our middle pin, which is our data pin. I'm going to attach it right here um, to our 
the resistor. Then we'll attach the other part of the data pin to the other side of the resistor and to pin six on the Arduino. Then we'll attach the ground wire to Arduino and ground to the breadboard. And then we have a ground wire which is also red. Don't let that be confusing to you. Let's we'll attach the ground wire here and also attach it to our breadboard. So there we go. We have a ground, 5 volt, and data pin. The data pin is attached to the resistor, and the resistor is attached to pin 6. We're going to go ahead and plug this in. I'm using the 9 volt wall adapter here that came with my Arduino Elegoo Mega Kit. I'm going to plug this in and turn it on first. And it is on. And now we're going to plug in the Arduino board. And then whatever I had up last should, might pop up on the, uh, the strip here, but I don't see it. So what we're going to do now, there it is. What we're going to do now is uh, go to Arduino IDE. And we'll go ahead and take my face off the camera here and put the uh, Arduino IDE on the screen. And what I'm going to do is go up here to, well, the first thing you want to do is download the the library, right? So you're going to type in fast LED, not LEED, but LED, and you're going to download that right there. So you have the fast LED library. Now, after you do that, close out the library. You've got that installed. You want to go to examples, scroll down here to fast LED, and then we're just going to open up the blink right here. Get rid of that right there. All right, and now we're going to. Um, we have 10 LEDs, so number of LEDs is going to be 10. Our data pin is six. We want to change that, and then come down here. Everything else looks fine. We'll go ahead and run this. See what it's got. Uh, failed to upload. Let's see. Do do do. Um, Mega board. Yes, you want to include your port. Sometimes I forget to do that. Now we'll upload. And there we go. This strip will start at zero. This is LED 1, LED 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 9. It's 10 LEDs, but it starts at zero. So right now, this is the fast LED pattern. It's a blink in the initial LED. But there are other things that we can do with this. We can change the code to uh, create different patterns. So if you wanted to blink LED number two, you just go right in here, try to anyway, and let's blink the second LED. All right, upload that. And now we got the second LED blinking. And then you can also do that for the second, or the third, the fourth, fifth, sixth, all the way up to the 10th LED, which would be uh, LED, um, LEDs 9. All right, it starts at 0, ends at 9 for 10 LEDs. Now we're going to blink every other LED. LED uh, 1, which is the second one, 1, 3, 5, and 7. In order to do that, we have included LED 1, which is the second LED, and then LED 3, 5, and 7. We're going to turn it on red, then it's going to be a delay of 500 milliseconds, then it's going to go black. So let's upload this. So you can change uh, these numbers right here for whichever LED that you want to light up. Now the next one we're going to light up all the LEDs and turn all the LEDs off. So in order to do that, I am going to use the fill solid function right here. I'm going to include LEDs, number of LEDs, and then what color I want it to turn. I want it to come on red. I want them to go off black. So let's upload it. See what we get here. All right, that's all the LEDs on and off. Maybe you're interested in chaser lights. So let's go ahead and set up the code for some chaser lights. And for that, we create an array to light up every LED uh, incrementally and then decrement the LED to turn them off. So let's go ahead and uh, I equals zero. And if I is less than the number of LEDs, which is 10, you increase by one. 
and it's going to increase the color red. And then after that, the uh, I equals the number of LEDs. If I is greater than or equal to zero, I will decrement so it'll turn off. Upload that, and then you'll see what I mean. So that is how you do that. And you can change the speed right down here. You can change it to say 50. You can make it go a lot faster. That dog's barking in the background. And also, you don't have to stick to typing out the collars either. You can uh, use a collar like this right here. CR, uh, CRGB is uh, red, green, blue parameters. Our red is 255. That's the max. And uh, the minimum is zero. And the blue here, we're using 100. So uh, green is zero. Red is uh, 255, the max. And that turns out to be a pinkish collar, as you can see right here. And with this code, we get, uh, it's not really chaser lights, I guess, uh, whatever you call it, um, zigzag lights or whatever. But anyway, that's the pattern that fits this code right here. And then you can play around with that and make it anything that you want. Now let's say that we want maybe three different segments of collar on here. How do we do that? Well, in order to do that, we are just going to take our array and we're going to break it up into three segments. So I, initially I is Z, I equals zero. I is less than three it'll increase as red and then at I equals three I is less than seven so in, until it gets to seven it's going to increase blue and at I equals seven I is less than or equal to ten so I will increase by one until it gets to ten and that color will be green and then after that it will be the pink color so let's go ahead and take a look at that as you can see, there are three different segments here, red, blue, and green, and it all comes back pink. And the pink is the 255-0-100 uh, mixture, RGB mixture. So that's another pattern you can play around with, and you can just change the parameters to see, to see what you like. We'll do another pattern here. This one's uh, like a chaser pattern, I guess more of what you would call a chaser. So in order to do that, so we've changed the code here for more of a chaser type of pattern. So whenever one LED lights up, it'll go to the next LED, and then the, the LED before that will go black. So that's more of a chaser type pattern. Let's upload this to see what I'm talking about here. And this is another pattern you can play around with. Make it your own. You can make it faster, slower, whatever you want to do. We can do 50. Upload that. It can go a lot quicker. So here are just some patterns you can work with. Well, this is just a few patterns that you can create just by changing the loop in the Blink example of the Fast LED library. Now, you can make these colors and patterns your own. You can change the timing on them, however you want to do. If there's any interest in, in uh, patterns like this, I can make another video. We can do some more patterns, but uh, we'll, we'll just see how this goes, and uh, hopefully you have fun with it. So now we're just going to connect the 30. You may want to connect it a little bit different here. I've got, like I said before, the uh, capacitor in, uh, in the, the adapter here. And I actually have three things in the, uh, in the negative side here. I've got the capacitor, I've got this wire which is connected to my LED strip, and then I've got another wire which I'm going to connect uh, right here to the ground pin of the Arduino. All right, and uh, ideally I would probably just want to solder another wire on top of that ground so I can have another ground split off but I didn't do that this should work and then I've got my data pin here I've got my 5, 5k resistor right here I want my data pin plugged into 6 so there we go now I'm going to plug in my 5 volt 2 amp plug which is uh, plugged into the wall here All right, I got that plugged in. Everything's set. Make sure all the connections are correct. Now it's time to plug in the Arduino. And then as you can see, it is uh, doing the same code that we just did. It's only doing it up to 10. So number 10. But let's say that we want to use the full length of our 
our strip here. So we're just going to change that to 30 and we'll upload that and you should see this run the length of the strip. There you go. Yeah, so if you're using strips of 30, uh, this works just fine. Now, if I used any more than that, I'd probably just connect to my external power supply, the 24 volt, 20 amp. If I was going to connect the whole reel, I could do that. And uh, that would be, that'd be fine to uh, do something like that. But uh, you want to be aware of uh, how many amps you're going to be drawing. And you just don't want your, your connections to get hot. So keep that in mind. And uh, you should be safe. Well, that's all I've got for today. I hope you found it helpful. I do appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell notification button. And I'll see you again very soon with another video.